Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about creating a replica domain controller in our server 2016 domain. Now, this lab is optional, so if you want to do it, you'll have to create a new virtual install of server 2016 full desktop so that you can complete it. Is it important? Yes, it is important because we don't want to leave our forest route out there hanging all by itself without any way to recover the domain. So to help us in this process, we create what's called a replica domain controller, which is an exact duplicate of our forest root. If the forest root goes down, we bring up the replica and we install all of the operation masters and anything else that we have to do to make it the new forest root. You can have as many replica domain controllers as you want. Normally we have at least one to help protect the network in case of the root domain controller does go down. With domain controllers it's never a matter of if they're going to go down, it's just a matter of when. So you want to make sure that you have a way to recover and we do this by performing backups and having a replica ready to go. Now I've already configured this Server 2016 full install just as I would Windows 10 or Server Core or any other machine that I need to join to the domain. So the first thing I have to do before I can promote this to a replica is get it inside of the domain. Now currently this machine is called DC2. I've already configured the IP addressing. Let's take a look at that real quick. So I go up here inside of my network adapter. I'm going to go to IP4, and you'll see that I have given it the host IP of 12, and I am pointing it over to my DNS server. The configuring of your machines to join the network doesn't change regardless what OS you're trying to install. If I'm doing Windows 10, Server 2012, Server 2016, Windows 8, it makes no difference. The procedure for joining these machines to the domain remains constant and it does not change. So to add a machine to a existing domain, I have to have a host IP that belongs to the networking portion where that domain resides. So my domain has a networking IP address of 192.168.145. I then have to assign it a host IP from the available range of IP addresses. Now to find the domain controller, we have to tell it where it can find a DNS server. I have a DNS server installed on the root DC for this domain and the IP address, that is to say the networking IP address assigned to that domain controller is 192.168.145.10. So we're gonna go ahead and say okay to that, say okay to this, Close this out. Now we're back up to my server manager. Now remember, I can use server manager to join this machine to the network, or I can use the system properties. But it's much easier if I just use what I have in front of me. So I'm just going to double click this, and that brings up the system properties. And now I can use the change option that I have here. I've already given it a user friendly name of DC2. Now I need to join the domain. One thing that I forgot to mention, you have to ensure that all your machines are in the same time zone. That's very important. That's because of the timestamps that Kerberos and Active Directory are going to place on everything that they do in communicating with your machines. So make sure they're all on the same time zone and that your time on the clocks is off no more than five minutes. So I've typed in my subdomain name that I'm using for my domain, us.cyberoffense.com. I'm going to hit OK. And in just a minute, it should pop up and ask me for my credentials. It now wants the domain administrator credentials so that I can join this machine to the domain. So I'm going to type in administrator, and then I'll type in my domain administrator password. So I've got my information typed in correctly. Now, one word of warning. If you do not get this dialog box and you get an error message, make sure that your networking adapters are configured correctly for this machine. Once I click OK, I'm then welcome to the 
cyberoffense.com domain. I'm going to say OK to that. Now it tells me that I must restart for the changes to take effect. I'm going to say close. And now I'm going to restart. My machine has rebooted. We're back up and I'm now ready to log on. But I need to make sure that I log on to the domain and not locally onto this server. So I'm going to make sure that I select other user and that I sign on to cyber offense. So I got to type in cyber offense backslash administrator. Make sure everything is spelled correctly. And I'm going to type in my administrator password for the domain. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm now pulling down all the policies and user settings for the domain onto this server. I now have a desktop. Server manager has completed loading up and it has refreshed. I'm going to click on local server. And you'll see that this machine is now part of the cyberoffense.com domain. Now that we have successfully joined our existing domain, we can now promote this server to a domain controller to be a replica. So what we're going to do is go up here to Manage, and we're going to go to Add Roles and Features. Here we're just going to say Next. We're going to say Next. And we've got our machine properly selected. We're going to say Next. And here we're going to select the role of Azure Directory Domain Services. You can see everything that's going to be installed when we install the Active Directory Domain Services. So we can go ahead and say Add Features. We can click on Next. And we can go ahead and say Next. And we can now click on Install. Now this is just going to, again, install the Active Directory Domain Services. We will promote this machine to being a replica when this part of the installation has completed. The Active Directory domain services have been successfully installed. We can now close out this wizard. And you'll see that we have that warning up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it tells me I need to promote this server to a domain controller. I'm going to go ahead and use this link right here. And that's going to bring up the wizard that we need to use. Now, we already have a new forest. So we're not going to go that route again. We're going to add a domain controller to an existing domain. That's where we're at. So the domain that we currently have is listed here. And we have the credentials. We have everything we need. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Next. Now it wants to do a domain name system server and a global catalog. That's fine. I don't have to install the DNS onto this machine. I can uncheck that box because I already have a DNS server. But if I install it on here, I can then configure it to be a secondary or a backup DNS server. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my recovery password for the directory service restore mode. So in your design, you have to decide whether or not you want the DNS server. The global catalog server is fine. Now remember that this is going to be a replica. So that's what we're building here. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. Again, you can ignore the delegation for this DNS server cannot be created. Not important. We're going to go ahead and say Next. You can leave everything here unchecked. It's already set for a default, and we can click Next. Go ahead and leave the default locations for all the different sysfalls, and we're going to click Next. This is your final option. This is the script that's going to be created to promote this machine to a replica domain controller in our existing domain. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. It's now going to run through the checks. Again, don't worry about these yellow triangle warnings. This is the one that you're concerned with up here where it says all prerequisites quits checks passed successfully. We can go down here and now we can scroll and we can see that that's also available here and we can click on install. These are the warnings that we've seen before. It just deals with the legacy security settings that are not backward or are backward compatible with NT4.0. And again, we talk about this delegation for this DNS server cannot be created. That's not important. It tells you right down here that you can ignore this. 
and it's going to automatically restart for us. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Our replica domain controller has rebooted and we're ready to do an input and then control alt delete. And now this machine is only going to allow me to log on as administrator to the domain. So I'm going to log on as administrator for cyber offense using my domain administrator account password. Server manager has settled down. I'm at my desktop. Now I have my server manager in front of me on this new replica domain controller. And it's no different than any other domain controller on my network. For instance, I can go in here and I can add to this server manager DC1 and server core and manage them from here just as well as I can from DC1 and its server manager. So I've typed in server core. I'm going to move it on over here to the next window. I'm going to go ahead and add it. I'm now going to add another server. I will add DC1. I'll type in DC1. Tell it to find it. And there it is. I'll move this over. I'll now say OK to that. And if I go into all servers, you're going to see that I have DC1, DC2, and server core inside of my server manager on this rep replica. So that regardless of which machine I'm on, I don't have to jump from this DC2 to DC1 just so that I can manage a machine remotely. I can do it here just as well. It tells me that my server core is not accessible at this time, and that is correct because I have it powered down. So I'm up inside of the DNS console now for my DC2. This is the replica. And if I would like to change now this DNS server from being a primary over to a secondary, I can just by going into the zone, right clicking and going to properties. Now, currently, this machine is an Active Directory integrated zone. So for me to knock this down to a secondary, well, then I would have to remove it from being Active Directory integrated and then promote it to a secondary. I'll show you how we do that. Let's go in here. We just select change, and now I can make this one a secondary just that easy. And it asks me, do you no longer want this zone to be Active Directory integrated? I'll say no. And I'll cancel this, but that's how easy it is. The advantage to having this machine configured as an Active Directory integrated DNS server is that if my primary or my root domain controller goes down, this machine will pick up and provide the DNS and whatever other information is needed for the devices on the network. That's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about creating a replica domain controller for our 2016 domain. So if you have any questions or you have any concerns about any of the information in this video or the lab, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor. And I'll see you in my next video.